Good morning, Pringle. We're in Pringle? We are in Pringle, South Dakota. Home of the potato chip? Home of the potato chip. No, Welcome. it's not. <laughs> it's actually, their claim to fame is the um, elk capital of South Dakota. But I've never seen elk. Well, I've never spent much time in Pringle. Chris? There's a monster fly in yeah, here. Yeah, we've got monster flies. I think it's going to try to eat me. Can you see that? Welcome back to a brand new episode here on the road, literally on the road now, 35 miles. We put in a hard That's 35 strange. miles yesterday. Yeah, man, it, it was a long drive. Definitely estranged being back on the road, um, working through some of the, the anxieties that I have, just making sure everything works the way it's supposed to. We do know we were limping with a couple things, the shower we're limping along with, and uh, what else? Um, there's that radiator hose that's oh, giving yeah, me a little a worry. Hose. We're going to need to fix that at some point. Hopefully we don't have an episode about breaking down on the side of the road. <laughs> going to keep everything topped off and keep an eye on it, but definitely need to get that fixed. And then there's the water pressure issue with the pump, the water mm -hmm. pump. But, you know, it is what it is. But we do have a new water pump if it comes down. In any regard, we are here. I am a day over 42 and you know how I feel. Great. A day over 42. A day over 42. <laughs> Don't feel special. But it was great to be able to celebrate with our dear Tea. our dear friends that are now our South Dakota family. And we, it's bittersweet. Say goodbye this morning. Huckleberry is doing well. He only woke up four times last night. <laughs> Lindsay was supposed to take him out, but I got the joy of doing that again. And three times he did absolutely nothing. On the fourth time... He ran off and got away from me. I was trying to find him with the flashlight. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I hear... <laughs> yeah, it was disgusting. So hopefully whatever he had stuck inside of him, he projectile pooped halfway to Wyoming. And hopefully it's not somewhere where somebody's going to... Yeah. I was looking for it. This, this is too, it's too hard much. to pick up diarrhea. If this is TMI. But... Um, you can go ahead and skip about 15 seconds. But yeah, I was trying to find it so I could see if the bone was in there. Yeah. And I was—I was, had to sniff my way closer and closer because <laughs> I couldn't see it. Did it was you just, smell it? I smelled it. It was upwind. And you couldn't find and it. And I kept walking upwind. There was a slight yeah. little foggy breeze, and I was—I <laughs> make—I make it sound beautiful, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Chasing this, the sin of the diary of four o'clock in the morning mist was rolling through the hills. I could see it with the beam of the light from my, from my flashlight, and then I could smell this vague scent of diarrhea. <laughs> So, he's, <laughs> Huck is back in full speed mode. He's already Hopefully. been running around and playing. Well, he's yeah. acting like he's fine, but we know he's not. So, we are going to continue to take care of him and keep an eye on him. But yeah. He's on a prescription diet food for the next month. Yep. And some blood work in a week. And then yeah. hopefully things will be mellowing out for him because they need to. Because we love the little guy. Our plan of the day is, um, Lindsay's got her coffee, so my coffee is on the way. Our plan of the day is to try to make it down toward Denver. As we shared, there's a nasty winter storm moving through the next, and it's not today or tomorrow, it's the day following, but um, it's pretty much following along the bottom of Wyoming's uh, border and, and north. So it's going to be nasty. As long as we're south of Wyoming, we should be okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to head south of Wyoming, which takes us into the Denver, Colorado area. Probably to a campground we've spent many, many nights in, Longmont. So lots to do today, lots of miles, not lots of miles, it's only a five hour drive, it'll take us eight, give or take. So we're gonna get started, I think it's like, what time is it now? It's eight o'clock, just before eight o'clock. Yeah, almost ready to go. By the way, I'm not getting out of my pajamas today, I'm just not doing it, mm. so. I'm not either. We'll see what the public thinks of that. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the drive and uh, yeah, I don't even know where we're going, but it should be a nice drive. We camped at our friend's house last night in their yard and it was a little unlevel. So of course we leveled out, which means the first thing we're gonna do this morning is we're gonna go ahead and pull off the blocks. This is a kind of new thing for us. So Lindsay's gonna pull forward. We're gonna hook up the car using our Roadmaster Nighthawk tow bar kit. It's a phenomenal experience for us because yesterday was a little strange, me driving, watching her drive, um, and probably her driving and watching me drive. So. We're going to go take care of that. We'll show you how awesome and how easy it is to hook this thing up and get it ready to go. And then uh, we are one unit again, ready to head south. It's been a while, so we're going to see if we can nail this on one shot.
the red team. And there's a reason why I showed Lindsay doing all this, um, and that's because I primarily drive the motorhome, and we love the Roadmaster tow kit because she can do it all herself. So if I made a mistake and I turned the wrong way on a one way, or we needed to turn around in a hurry or whatever, Lindsay can get out and within a couple minutes have everything disconnected herself so that I can then back up. We love, 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 love how simple it is for Lindsay to be able to do most of the work of hooking it up or unhooking it. Obviously, if I jump in, we can get it done quicker, but the idea is that Lindsay's always prepared to be able to do this in the event that we needed to um, in some kind of emergency or crisis situation. Right now, the arms aren't locked, so I'm gonna pull forward with the RV just a little bit, and it's gonna pull the CRV, and you'll hear there'll be a little click, and it'll be locked in place. Then we'll go ahead and put the tow defender, the screen, which keeps rocks from getting kicked up. We'll put that, um, connect that and then we'll be ready to start driving south. A little bit of a process, but once we get the hang of it again, it won't take us as long and we won't be showing you every time we do it. Okay, slope, slope, it's good, it's locked. We're good. Perfect. Couldn't go any smoother. Now that the car is all connected to our Nighthawk tow bar, now I have to run the car through its gears. Um, you, then you put it in neutral and you let the car run for three minutes until you turn it off. Now I set a timer for three minutes. <laughs> now you wait. <laughs> this is so you don't ruin the transmission in the car. Um, it stays in neutral when you're towing it. And then you basically, when I turn the car off, I just put it in the first accessory so that the odometer is not on, but the wheel does not lock. All right, now we're ready. The timer just went off. Stop. And I'm going to turn the car off. All right, wheel is unlocked. If I turn this one on, it turns the odometer on, that's wrong. So we're gonna leave it right there. And then I have a switch right here that turns, basically cuts the power off to the radio so we don't drain the battery. I got that off. So now this is ready to go. So along with having the Nighthawk tow bar, we also have the Invisibrake system. Um, this system is great. It is a little more expensive than some of the brake systems where, that don't stay permanently installed onto the car. But we went with the permanently installed Invisibrake. And it's really awesome because you don't have to do anything. It just, you make sure that the car is plugged into the RV and it does everything on its own. You don't have to set it up, you don't have to break it down, it just stays in the car. Um, and I mean, it works amazing. So I'll show you it here. It is under the driver's seat. That's it. And once you set the brake pressure, you never really have to set it again unless you, you know, notice an issue going on or a brake smell. It's pretty awesome. Now I'm going to get Chris moving forward and I'll show you what it sounds like when it works. That's it. That's the brake being applied. It basically, there's a pulley here and it pulls, it presses on the brake pedal. Release the brakes! 
go. And that's how it works. It's pretty awesome. Brakes? All right, perfect. Brakes work. Left blinker. Yep, it's on. You got it? Yep. Okay, right blinker. Right blinker. It's on. All right, perfect. So we're safe. We're good. Let's hit the road. Let's hit the road. So there's another feature of the Roadmaster um, brake kit in particular. So when I touch the brakes, this light comes on. So it tells me that it's, working. that it's working, which is always good to know. Lindsay might have mentioned the reason why we wanted the Invisibrake is because our RVs gross vehicle weighted rate is not, um, I mean, it's big, but it's not huge. It's not class A huge. So if we were trying to break with this and stop both us and the CRV, that wasn't going to work out well. So we invested in the Invisibrake and it changes everything. As soon as I touch the brakes here, it goes off on the CRV. So the CRV breaks itself. So we are, uh, we're in action. It's kind of funny to be driving again with the car towed because I don't feel it at all. <laughs> yeah, That's the amazing thing about this wonderful engine. It is, it's a gas guzzler, but it guzzles the same amount of gas whether we're towing a 3,500 or 3,500 pound CRV or just ourselves. Let's do it. So another thing about the Roadmaster tow kit is that it has uh, limited my speed. Can't go over 65 miles an hour which is fine with me. Um, slow and steady wins the race. Keeps me at my op optimal um, fuel economy anyway. So that's just something to note, something I had to get used to, as well as the idea that we're gonna have to pull into larger gas stations. So none of the mom, mom and pop stuff that we would normally find on the road. Using Gas Buddy, the Gas Buddy app is usually how we find the best price. Um, so we pay a little bit more for the convenience of a Flying J or a Pilot. Um, they pay a little bit more for that but they have big wide open lanes and all that. So that's where we're headed. For more on why we love Roadmaster, be sure to check the link below. We called them and paired up with them. So they're gonna be giving away some free stuff if you buy through them directly, which is how we connected. We love their customer service, absolutely incredible. They responded right away when we reached out and we said, hey, we got a million questions. They answered a million questions and got us on the road with our awesome setup. So. That's going to be in the link below and uh, we're going to do a review video as well just on the Roadmaster system for why, again, how we made the decision and, and why we've chosen to go with it and why and how it is working out spectacularly to get us from one place to the next with our wonderful 2010 Honda CRV in tow. So most Flying J's are huge and big wide open spots for you to be able to pull in and pull straight through and get back out on the road. This one's not. This one's more like those mom and pop ones. So it's going to be a little challenging looking out for the car, but it turns really well behind us. Um, I just need to make sure that everything is clear before I start my turn. So yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yesterday. 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 Wow. Start, what a day. Fun. <laughs> it started out fun. Exciting. We're and on the then, road. Mm-hmm. We hooked oh, yeah. up the car. Everything's mm -hmm. going great. We even made it to Cheyenne, met up with your cousin. Mm -hmm. That was Which fun. Which was great, yeah. She just got engaged, so you got to see her. And meet her new fiance. Meet her new fiance. And then uh, we decided to go to Breckenridge so you could spend the day with her today, mm -hmm. the next day. And the mountain's belt killed us. That's where everything but the wheels fell off. <laughs> so, yeah, so. And we didn't film <clears throat> any of it. Nope. So yeah. we'll just go ahead and do a brief summary, but. Um, these mountain passes were on I-70, and we've driven this before in just our motorhome, but when we're towing the car, it, the, the whole thing, the, the car can't go over 65 miles per hour. So even if I'm coasting downhill, which is how I would normally handle the mountains, I would downshift and then coast, um, I, I would normally be okay. But with this extra weight behind me, yeah. and the fact that it wasn't downshifted, um, it's just a neutral, so it's just dead weight, uh, I was picking up way too much speed, and so we had to pull over at one point, and the brakes were smoking. That was exciting. We waited <laughs> about 20 or 30 minutes, and then we... Thank we goodness were, it was cold out, so... Yep, yeah, and we were safely on the side of the road. We realized that we should just disconnect the CRV and Lindsay drive that while I drive the RV back through the mountains, and so we finished up that little bit. Yeah. 
that was exciting. That was nerve wracking. Um, just before then, I guess we should back up a second and say Huckleberry went poop, which is exciting for us because we mm. needed him to have a poop. But when he did that in the afternoon, there was a little bit of blood in it and it didn't look normal. So that's where we kind of decided, let's go see a vet right away. First thing in the morning, yeah. this morning. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we found a vet in Breckenridge that was willing to take us on kind of an emergency or urgent, urgent basis. And, uh, so that was part of why we wanted to come to Breckenridge as well. Pull in here, get all set up. I hit a bump. Everything goes flying everywhere. Lindsay's not here to yell and scream at me, but, uh, one of her little deck art decoration things fell off the wall and the lemons went everywhere. And the dogs are like, what the heck? <laughs> Pulling in pitch black and, uh, get all set up, which is great. And, uh, then we go to turn on the power. And there's no power. Yeah. So we have a really cool system where when we're, we're boondocking, we can run our inverter and run power through our inverter to all of our outlets. Um, so it makes it just like we're on shore power. That, that's a, a transfer switch that we have from GoPower. It's really awesome when it works, but something's going on with it right now. So, and it's not working. So it then, worked fine the other day. Yeah, it worked great. <laughs> so, all the times that we needed it to, and we were making sure everything worked before we hit the uh, road. So it's just one thing. The inverter does work, which is great. If the inverter was broken, that would be a whole other crap storm for us. Um, but the inverter is working fine. It's powering our little portable fridge. We've got a little power strip so we can still run um, uh, power cords from it and charge things, our computers or whatever we need to charge. But it is a terrible, terrible, terrible inconvenience. And that thing doesn't cost, the transfer switch doesn't cost a whole lot. It's just, uh, did we install it correctly or do we have some other problem that we didn't realize we have? I am like Eeyore, if you know me or you will know me, when or Chicken Little, when things go bad, they really go bad. And so in the back of my mind, I'm thinking we've got a bigger issue than just swapping out the transfer switch. But who knows? Right now, we're in Breckenridge, Colorado. Lindsay's about to go out and enjoy the afternoon or the day with her cousin. Huckleberry came back from the vet. How was that? Good news all around. So did another x-ray. Um, no bones in the stomach, all the intestines look normal, no swelling anywhere. I mean, he looked like a 100% normal dog. So she wasn't worried. She also wasn't worried about the pancreatitis, which is great news. Um, so he's on his so. way, he's on the mend. And if I look like I have sleepy eyes right now, it's because Huckleberry dragged me out four different times in the morning for the second morning in a row, or the second night in a row. So tonight we know he's better, we hope he's better. And I'm not going to get fooled by that. He already, uh, what's that thing? The boy who cried wolf? Yeah, he, he already still. He already cried wolf. Three yeah. times we went out, three times he, he did nothing. Mm -hmm. The fourth time we went out, he peed. I'm like, great, good boy. Thanks for waking <laughs> me up at 1 o'clock, at 2.30, at 4 o'clock, at 5 o'clock. Anyway, we're going to wrap up this video here in beautiful Breckenridge, Colorado. We're not going to really show you anything. We're going to take the day off and just kind of relax and recoup. I'm going to take some naps, some power naps, and hang out with the dogs while Lindsay goes and hangs out with her cousin. But we are always appreciative that you're joining us, even in the mundane, such as today. Uh, thanks for being a part of our wander. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel, please. Like this video. Leave us a positive comment or a question. We love to interact with you. And uh, have a wonderful, wonderful day wherever you are. Bye. Bye. Let's sleep caught up with me the lack of sleep no felicia she's out there she knows i said hi <laughs> bye felicia <laughs>